But even at, at art school, you dropped out. Yeah, just as I was about to get my degree. Yeah, why? How come? Because you were almost there. Are you, are you, are well, there are was this thing called punk rock going on. <laughs> I just was much more interested in that, and I uh, didn't see the uh, use, really, of a, of a degree in art. Because I had no plans of teaching or anything. Um, I mean, I wish I would have graduated now, of course. But yeah, you do, you do. Yeah, I, th you know, I think it's good to finish things. But anyway, um, I got involved in uh, publishing uh, this ma magazine a friend of mine and I put together called No Magazine, which was like punk and some scatological images, porno, whatever you want to say, and writing and thing, art. We did, I did a couple issues with him, and then uh, I started a band. The little Cripples. Yeah. How good were they? If I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I don't know what it sounded like even now. I think maybe it sounded like Wire a little bit or something. It was probably okay. okay. But did you... I, I, I didn't really know what I was doing at that point. My singing was pretty terrible, probably. And, uh, so I did that for a while, and then I met someone I started writing songs with. That group broke up, and we just decided to move to New York. <clears throat> the whole thing in New York uh, was going on with, uh, well, it was sort of ending, but the contortions, Teenage Jesus, Glenn, uh, Glenn Branca's uh, Theoretical Girls, I heard all that stuff, and I thought it was amazing, DNA. And to me, that seemed much more interesting than the kind of three, three chord song structures of L.A. punk rock, which was pretty conservative musically. It just seemed more like an intense uh, emotional onslaught. And I thought New York was the place to be. I was a huge fan of Suicide, too. And went there, and that whole scene was sort of fizzling, and it took, it took a while for, uh, for me to make a good band. I had a really horrible band before Swans. Didn't really know what I was doing. And then started Swans, finally, um, in 1981, 82. And started writing the songs, so-called writing the songs on bass. Why on bass? That's what I could play. Okay. I couldn't really play it well, either, but in a typical way. So, but when when did you find out? And be, yeah, because you because you said you had a few bands before Swans. When did you know that Swans was that something different? Do you still recall a certain song or maybe a certain show or session you had? Well, I did this little EP, and, and that was still kind of rockish, and that wasn't good enough. I after listening to it, I realized that wasn't good enough, and then I don't know. I, I started making these. Things that were, I'm focusing more on, on not trying to make a song, but just make really intense physical sounds and rhythms. And as soon as I hit on that, it started coming together. And um, yeah, well, it's just slow, very slow rhythms. I, I concentrated on. Um, I had two drummers basically, one of them hitting metal and things. And um, we used uh, cassette tapes. This was no samplers then. And it would record drones or noise sounds. And um, for, at first, the percussionist would, would play, like we had two big SVT bass um, heads that he would push the tapes through. And he, he would uh, push down a uh, volume pedal in time with the, with the rhythm. So say I would go, do a downbeat um, on the bass with this big chorus, I'd go and he'd go with the sound, it's just this big, you know, chunks of sound coming at you, slabs, I guess. And then guitar, Norman Westberg's guitar was fantastic. He'd find the root note and basically just make these open chords that sustained. And I'd scream my my silly business. <laughs> so that was, I think... So there was two bass players as well in the early days. I was playing bass and another one was playing bass. So we had two, two drummers, the tapes, two bass players, and guitar. I think it was then for you, 82, 83 or something? 82, yeah, 83. Right. 